Today on Rescue Vet, a dog owner travels two hours to seek help for her nine-year-old Basset Mix, who is suffering from severe back pain. Will veterinary specialty care's sole neurologist be able to cure the pain through surgery, or is the issue untreatable? So it potentially could be even a spinal tumor. An African pygmy hedgehog has come down with a respiratory infection. Will Dr. Berger be able to treat him in time? Or is it too late for this prickly critter to recover? Respiratory infections for a hedgehog can be pretty serious, which can lead to death. Veterinary specialty care is known for its wide variety of treatments, but it is also a referral clinic for veterinarians located within a three-hour radius. Dr. Brofman is the sole neurologist and neurosurgeon at Veterinary Specialty Care. I only see cases with neurological problems, so that is a case, um, something affecting the central nervous system, be it the brain uh, or the spinal cord or, or something affecting the peripheral nervous system, which is the muscles and nerves. Today he will be examining a nine-year-old Basset mix named Roscoe, who is suffering from severe back pain and is struggling to walk. My name's Georgia Jeffords, and I'm from Florence, South Carolina. Georgia has traveled two hours to veterinary specialty care because her local veterinarian referred her to Dr. Brofman. My dog's name is Roscoe P. Coltrane Jeffords, and he belonged to my youngest son. My youngest son got killed August 13, 2002. So I inherited Roscoe. She has a very strong connection to him because he was her son's dog that had uh, unfortunately passed away in a, in a car accident. Roscoe gets where he can't walk. I mean, his hind legs are to go totally. Okay. And so he's not able to support himself at all? He'll, he'll completely collapse in the hind limbs? Right. This, right. Is, this is, it gets better when you put him on steroids? Is that right? right. Okay. Although steroids have helped mask the pain in Roscoe's back, it's not a cure. Dr. Brofman needs to find a more permanent solution. Friday night, I really was very concerned because he couldn't move from room to room even. Just lay there and he just panted and kind of moaned a little bit. And I was very, very concerned. In fact, at one point I thought he might not make it through the night. Well, the first thing I'd like to do actually is have you take him out into the hallway here and just have you walk him up and down the hallway for me so I can uh, assess his gait and see how he's able to walk. Okay. Roscoe struggles to walk with ease and is showing signs of pain. Dr. Brofman decides to conduct a series of tests to determine where the pain is coming from. So I'm just gonna do a quick exam on him, kind of check the different functions of him neurologically. What I'm doing here is just seeing if he can sense the position that his limbs are in. Not too bad in that leg, a little slower in the left leg. Roscoe's reflexes are slow, which could mean one of several things, including an infection, ruptured discs, or even a tumor. So he's kind of grunting a little bit. Is that, is that unusual for him when I'm moving him around? Yeah. Dr. Brofman applies pressure to Roscoe's spine in order to find the source of pain. It becomes obvious that just a small amount of pressure is causing discomfort. Okay, so he definitely is uncomfortable in that region there. So based on his, his exam, he seems to have something affecting his spinal cord between his hips and his shoulders. It sounds like at times they can be pretty severe without medication, is that right? 
So different things that, it, that could be affecting his spine, uh, the most likely thing would be a slip disc that's pushing up on the spinal cord and, and causing compression. Other things to consider would be that there's an infection or inflammation of the spinal cord or that there is some sort of compression from one of the bones being abnormal in appearance. He's, he's a little young for it, but kind of in, in the middle age range, so potentially that there could be a, even a spinal tumor. A spinal tumor is not the news Georgia was expecting to hear. She is now faced with a potentially life-threatening prognosis. Being a specialist it can sometimes be very emotionally taxing. Uh, I don't get to see healthy puppies and kittens. People come to see us, they have no real knowledge of us. They, they, we don't have a relationship with them like they do with the regular vet. And they come to us in a very highly emotional state with animals and pets that they love, like family, that are um, really usually very, very sick. If we were going to consider surgery, the procedure would um, entail first doing an MRI. The MRI would help us figure out where the problem is exactly in the spine and, and what it is. Is it a disc or is it something else? And the MRI does require that he be anesthetized. Uh, so there, there's always some risk to that. It's very small, less than one or two percent complication rate, but, but we can see complications with anesthesia. If the MRI showed something other than a herniated disc, certainly I would give you a call and we could discuss uh, what I'm seeing and, and what the different options are. Georgia decides to proceed with the MRI and is hopeful Dr. Brofman doesn't find a tumor. Today at All Creatures Veterinary Clinic, Dr. Berger will be examining a five-year-old African pygmy hedgehog named Voodoo, which has developed a severe respiratory infection. Respiratory infections for a hedgehog can be pretty serious, which can lead to death. Um, we're hoping it's not anything major, but it, it could be. How are we doing today? Good, how are you? Doing well, thank you. Who do we have here? This is Voodoo. Hi, Voodoo. This is one of our breeder males. Okay. We got Voodoo a couple of months ago from a breeder in Jacksonville, Florida. Voodoo is a pet for us. Uh, we do intend to breed him at some point, but we want to make sure that he doesn't have anything that could be contagious as far as respiratory infection goes first. And is he the only hedgehog you have? No, we have a couple of them. A couple of them? Yeah. And what's going on with him today? Um, he's been kind of wheezing. Wheezing a little bit? Mm -hmm. I think I hear it. Uh, he's grumpy. <laughs> he's not feeling good. Any coughing? Um, no coughing, just the wheezing. Okay, great. And just for a couple of days now? Mm-hmm. Okay. The other hedgehogs, no problems? No, just him. Okay. Voodoo sneezing like that definitely threw me off guard. We've never had a respiratory problem with any of our hedgies. Um, and they still do ball up. Even when he came out of his ball and seemed fine, he would ball right back up. Uh, we've never had a respiratory problem like that. Hedgehogs roll into balls as a protection mechanism. Predator's going to go on to a nice other meal that's not quilly and, and it's gonna cause a lot of pain. Sounds like he's a little mad too. Yeah, he doesn't feel good. I'm gonna turn the lights out and see if we can get a look in his eyes. Okay. Any discharge or anything from the eyes? Nope. Looking in his eyes, we're looking for uh, blood vessels in the back of his eyes for increased blood pressure. I did not see any signs of infection or hypertension in his eyes, um, which is great. Good. Okay. <laughs> Don't wanna make you too mad. Still eating, right? Yes. What we're trying to do is get a listen to his lungs. I don't know if he'll let us do it. I'm sneaking under here. Hedgehogs are one of the more difficult exotic animals to work with because of their quills and their defensive behavior. With quills instead of fur, um, they're much more prone to infection. It's very easy for one quill to get infected, for that infection to spread through the local bloodstream and, and affect all the skin. Okay, good. No. Definitely has a little bit of increased lung sounds. Okay. When we listen to his lungs, there's definitely some areas of consolidation where we're not hearing the normal lung sounds, um, but there are areas where we're hearing increased sounds. So that is typical for some type of bacterial pneumonia. Pneumonia is hard to treat for hedgehogs and can often lead to death. So Dr. Berger will have to find an immediate solution to prevent Voodoo's illness from taking a turn for the worse.
Dr. Berger uses Q-tips to inspect Voodoo's nostrils while trying to avoid getting bitten and minimizing stress on the hedgehog. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Come here, monster. Good boy, oh. Okay, all right. <laughs> I'm making him stop torturing you. Okay. After the examination, Dr. Berger is now certain the prognosis is bacterial pneumonia. They don't have a lot of reserves, so we really want to get on top of this fairly quickly and get a good exam in. Untreated for another day or two, I don't think that we could have turned it around. He probably would have died. So it sounds to me, you know, he just got a little bit of increased lung sounds. We're gonna put him on a little antibiotic for a week, which okay. will be an oral antibiotic to make it easier for you. Okay. He'll come into a syringe and basically just drop a little grape juice so that he doesn't okay. get that bitter taste in his mouth. I'd also just keep an eye on the other ones just to make sure that there's nothing going on between them. I don't think it's an infectious in origin. Mm -hmm. It's all something that he developed. Okay. Okay, so sure. I'll go get that for you. Awesome. Be right back and I'll show you how to use it. Okay, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Back at veterinary specialty care, Roscoe is getting ready to have his MRI. Although he still struggles to walk, Roscoe is in good spirits. Dr. Brofman and senior veterinary technician Kelly Taws administer pre-anesthetics to sedate Roscoe before inducing the anesthesia. What I had discussed with her before the MRI was that it was most likely a herniated disc and that if that was what we found on the MRI, we would just go ahead and take him into surgery. Except when I finished the MRI, it was obvious that it was going to be a little bit more invasive and involved than previous thought. These are actually disc herniations causing pretty severe compression of the spinal cord in multiple sites. So here's what normal spinal cord looks like, and then at the next disc, you get pretty severe compression as well. And so that's about four or five disc spaces that are pretty severely compressed, and there is the potential that he could be worse postoperatively. Uh, there's always that potential, with, even if it was just one disc, but with these multiple chronic discs like this, this has been going on for six months, there's always a risk that there could be adhesions to the spinal cord, and as you remove the disc material, um, it causes damage to the spinal cord. Due to the amount of severely compressed discs that were discovered, Dr. Brofman is now worried they may be harder to remove and could cause damage to Roscoe's spine post-operatively. As Roscoe recovers from the anesthesia, Dr. Brofman discusses the MRI results with Georgia. Goes back to normal, and then we get to the next disc space, and again you can see how misshapen. There was a lot of disc herniations that, that are severe, and they probably all need to be addressed surgically. When it's chronic like this, and when there's multiple discs like this, I, I do feel that there is a, somewhat of an increased risk associated with the surgery of there being worsening of signs. I do know he's in a lot of pain, and as as you said, there's a lot of discs mm -hmm. involved. Okay. So. Um, so when would I be able to take him home? So if we did the surgery tomorrow... Even though there are many risks involved, Georgia decides it is best to proceed with surgery. Okay. Okay. Sound like a plan? Sounds like one. All right. Can I see him before yeah. I leave? Yeah, absolutely. As soon as he's uh, away from anesthesia, I'll, uh, I'll go check on him right now and have someone come get you. And then what I'll do is I'll call you again tomorrow morning before okay. we do anything. Just make sure that you're, you know, this is still the, the route you want to you go with and see if there's any other questions. She just felt that it was going to be very painful for him to not do the surgery and she was well aware of those risks and was willing to take it just to make him more comfortable. And she just made it, you know, with his best interest in mind. That's all you can really do. Are you okay? Are you okay? Since I'm feeling a little out of I'm mind. sorry. 
I have no idea what just happened. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to leave you too. I don't want to leave you, but they won't let me stay with you. I know. <laughs> So sad, aren't you? Roscoe is experiencing post-anesthetic dysphoria. Although it sounds like he is in pain, what he is exhibiting is disoriented sensation from the anesthetics. We're going to keep him here overnight, and um, tomorrow we'll plan on doing surgery to uh, decompress the spinal cord and remove that disc material that, that's causing the pain and weakness. In cases like this, where there's such an emotional attachment on her part, just due to the, the, the story behind how she got him, it, it definitely puts a little extra pressure on me. We'll just have to remove that disc material tomorrow and, and hope for the best and, and uh, get him home to her uh, doing, doing well. At veterinary specialty care, Roscoe is being induced with anesthesia. The hair on his back is shaved off for sterility during surgery. Eye drops are used to prevent his eyes from drying out. Dr. Brofman begins surgery by exposing the vertebrae. And so right now I'm just palpating for different landmarks so I know which vertebrae I'm at. I first approached the most severe compression and they were very, very chronic, and the big problem with those is that there's um, adhesions between the discs and the uh, spinal cord, which makes it very difficult to safely remove it. So basically what I'm gonna have to do is remove the bone so I can visualize the spinal cord and the disc material that's pushing on it, and then um, decompress the spinal cord so it lays down flat. And now I'm just trying to remove, there's a bunch of fibrous tissue associated with the disc. It may be a tumor. Trying to get in here a little better and see. In the spinal canal, it's, either way, it's not good. Spinal tumors are typically very hard to remove and can lead to death if diagnosed as malignant. Dr. Brofman is hopeful this will not be the case for Roscoe. Dr. Berger will instruct Sarah on how to administer the antibiotics to help treat Voodoo's bacterial pneumonia. I'm gonna let you do this at home. Okay. Because he's already mad at me. Right. And this is gonna be the antibiotics. Right. So you're gonna just draw 0.1 mLs. Okay. And I'll send some of the some, and then just mix this with some grape juice. Okay. Give it to him orally. I'm not gonna do it to him now because he's already upset. Yeah. Um, and that should be it. And then the other recommendation too is just to increase the temperature of the okay. of the enclosure to about 85 degrees. Okay. That'll help a lot with them fighting infection. All right. And then if you don't mind, give me a call next week and let me know. Sure. Okay. I'll do that. All right. It's good to see Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Berg. Take care. Come on, Master. If used properly. The antibiotics should clear up Voodoo's pneumonia, but there is always a chance he may not recover. Dr. Brofman is trying to determine if a tumor is present in Roscoe's spine. If it is a tumor, it will be sent off to a pathologist for diagnostics. No, it's just a disc, so that's good. Thankfully, no tumors are present, only ruptured discs. Wow, but it's a, it is huge. Oh. However, Dr. Brofman decides to stop operating on any more discs because of the risk that it may cause more damage to Roscoe's spine. After addressing the first two discs, I just felt that um, I was really concerned that I may be starting to do more harm than good. With chronically ruptured discs, there can be adhesions to the spinal cord that can cause more damage when removed. The benefits of further surgery need to be weighed against the risks. Instead of pushing the issue with less severely affected discs, decided to wake him up, wanted to see where he was, reassess him, and then see how he does over the next few weeks to few months. And if we need to, we can always go in surgically at the other sites as well. Hi, it's Dr. Brofman. How are you doing? 
We just uh, finished up with Roscoe's surgery, and he's uh, recovered and, and resting comfortably right now. I, I ended up only approaching the two sites that were the worst. I just, um, I was concerned, as I had discussed with you yesterday, that we could potentially make them worse with the surgery. And so I just felt that, you know, it was kind of a judgment call on my part. And if we need to down the line, we can always approach the other two sites if he's, if he's doing well and, and recovers well from the surgery and wouldn't do it for any uh, additional cost for you. Um, I, th I think she was pretty happy with, with my, my judgment call, and that's essentially what it was. Uh, you know, it wasn't right or wrong, it was just, just my clinical judgment, what I thought was the best thing to do with uh, experience with cases like this in the past. Right now, it's kind of up in the air, and we'll just have to respond to how he is and how he's doing and uh, play, it, play it by ear and, and just um, we'll wait and see how he does. The use of antibiotics on voodoo proved to be successful just after a few days. After Dr. Berger gave us the medication, uh, we did use it for a few days for him. He drank the grape juice. Everything seemed to clear up, so there was no possibility of it being transferred to any of our other hedgies. It would have probably been devastating if it was something serious. We've never really lost a family member or any of our animals, um, so it would have, would have definitely affected us. After the third day of the antibiotics, the nasal discharge cleared up, and it's really great that the antibiotic that we used worked because we're limited in, all the, in our choice of antibiotics for these guys. I mean, it would feel terrible if something happened to the little guy. After Voodoo's respiratory problem healed up, uh, we did try breeding him multiple times. Um, he, none of our females seemed to catch. So what we did was we put him up for adoption. He's now in a high school classroom. A biology teacher that teaches wildlife biology has him. Uh, she teaches 11th and 12th grade, so he's there with the students. He's getting all the attention he could ever wish for. At the same time, it's giving students an opportunity to get to know the species. He's definitely serving a great purpose, and I'm sure he's really happy with the kids holding him. So he's, he's more than happy where he's at.